Hi everyone and welcome. As you can see from the repair description below, this is for a Teddy Pardo. Uh, the model number is I80A, which is a combined integrated amplifier, effectively high end, which incorporates uh, the original uh, pre amplifier main board and then two uh, separate left and right channel power amplifier modules that can be seen in the video. Really, the purpose of this particular overview is just not only just to speak about this particular repair, but also uh, get my kind of take on things with regard to what you see within the industry, particularly around what I would term as right to repair. And uh, this is this is something which you know is very very strongly uh, driven uh, in the U.S. by independent repairers. And Lewis Rossman, whose details and link is connected below, uh, has, has really campaigned very very hard for this to happen. And you see this. You know, for many, many customers and end users who today purchase equipment and uh, when that equipment um, malfunctions, they don't have the ability to actually either take it to an independent repairer because the independent repairers cannot gain access to service manuals, spare parts, etc. It really leaves them in a predicament. And this is kind of one such example. So for this particular amplifier, what happened was the end customer reached out directly to Teddy Pardo, who are based over in Israel. And they reached out in connection with the, with the issue. So the issue here is that on the left channel, with no input connected, you have this low static sound which is in there. And basically what, what, what the company advised is, okay, you can, you can send it back to us, right? So we don't have any recognized authorized repair agents anywhere else located on, on, where you can send the device. So you need to return it back to us here uh, at our main head office in Israel. Okay, that's fine. But then what the customer then gets advised is that uh, due to customs issues, you know, you really need to avoid FedEx or UPS, which of course are American uh, companies. And then uh, the other information that they came back was that uh, you, we probably need to do quite a bit of explanation to customs if you detail that, you know, it's an audio amplifier. And also as well, what you need to do is just mark on there that it's a power supply and put the monetary value at around 50 US dollars. Well, quite understandably, the customer then comes back to the, to Teddy Potter and says, look, you know, this is a high-end piece of equipment. You know, what I cannot do is send it by a courier, and then there's a risk maybe it could be damaged or it could be lost. So what the customer then did is, you know, reached out, and in this case, they contacted me and said, you know, can you have a look at this piece of equipment for me? Yeah, no problem at all. So I start to do the initial analysis and then what I'm able to do then is to pinpoint that the actual noise or static issue is coming from the pre-amplifier left channel and round about the area where Q13 is located. So understandably I advise the customer, look, you know, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to Teddy Potter and I'm going to see, look, will you provide any schematics for this area of the board so I can just localize it down because this is surface mount, right? So what you don't want to be doing is just desoldering components and then randomly changing them. And then the other issue is that some of the specific transistors in that area of circuit, you know, just have a type number written on them. And what you can find is surface main components is these type numbers are not identical or, or, or do not actually identify a specific component. So one particular transistor, when you check the code, should be a 2SD2704T146. And it should be an MPN device. But then you go check this on the board, and lo and behold, they're actually PMP devices. So what you need, of course, is the service manual or the schematic to confirm exactly what is that device which is then installed into there. So, of course, I'm advising the customer, you know, this is what I've done. I put together you know, a detailed email that went back to Teddy Pardo showing the uh, circuit boards that you see here and the area of concern. And I said, look... Now, rather than just this blindly changing components, you know, you're able to provide the service data. And nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing comes back, no dialogue, no communication. So this is during the holiday period. So the customer said, you know, what do you want to do? I said, well, look, let's give them a little bit of time. That's, that's fine. You know, no issue there. And, you know, about two weeks go past and still nothing. So the customer then emails back because they got the original response and then copied, you know, my particular email address in uh, for the repair and Teddy Pardo come back and said well as advised please send us the amplifier back 
and we'll carry out the repair as per the original instructions. I.e. don't use FedEx, don't use UPS. Mark it as a power supply, put it down as 50 US dollars and uh, we'll take a look at it. You know, so I'm not sort of, you know, going all out, you know, with regard to Teddy Potter. What I'm sort of saying here is that this is not unusual, right? And uh, currently there's a number of amplifiers which are in the workshop, which again have been sent through for repair, but there are particular brands out there, I'm not going to name these brands, which operate the same kind of principle where end customer is reaching out for local support, they identify someone or a company who's able to carry out the repair work, and then when, when the repair company tries to reach out for information, they're completely stonewalled. So then the customers are left waiting. The repair agent or company is then just left waiting, and then eventually, maybe, maybe not, something might come back. And really sort of comes back to this right to repair. You know, if you if you... Make a purchase, and if you think about uh, this Teddy Pardo amplifier, you know what the customer's done there is they've made an investment, right? So, this is an investment where they're going to sell the product for profit. What I'm referring to here is that they've made an investment in that brand, right? And what they would be expecting here is that throughout that relationship which they've invested in, you know, that particular company would provide you know the, the pre sales and post sales support. But typically what happens with companies is that they will provide a level of support, and this is some companies, when a product is within warranty. But then when it's outside of warranty, you're kind of much on your own. You know, it's almost like you get cut loose and it's like, well, it's not under warranty, so there's very little we can do. Now, when you look at this piece of equipment, it's probably retailing upwards of like two to three thousand US dollars, maybe, you know, equivalent in euros or there about in pounds sterling. So... That is not a low-cost entry-level amplifier, right? This is an audiophile uh, amplifier. And the thing is with electronics, and I may have mentioned this on previous blogs, right? It's not if a piece of equipment will fail, it's electronic. It's only the when it will fail, and we don't know, right? So, again, coming back to the point, if, if it's a particular company that's providing this equipment, and these could be, you know, higher-end power amplifiers, for example where the product just about limps through its warranty period, and then it then fails, and guess what? Hey, you're not going to be able to get this thing repaired. If you do go to one of our authorised repairers, you may well, in some cases, be quoted a price which is equivalent to, or in some cases higher than what it would be to replace the amplifier if you went and bought new. So this is the point that I'm making about this investment. You know, my general take on all of this is there's... A lot of companies out there who do a great job but then there's other companies out there who don't do a great job and I really feel with regard to the industry and a way you see um, particularly uh, larger companies you know buying up some of the smaller companies and then not delivering on what I would say is our brand recognition you know the shout out there is you know you need to stop and have a think about what it is that you're doing right because if it doesn't align to the customers needs and requirements and then also as well, if you're not able to provide that premium level of service, which, you know, that's the investment that the company made, right? They don't want to just buy one product from you. They want to purchase multiple products. They want to recommend your products. And that's really what it is about when you build a brand loyalty and you make that investment, you know, in that particular company's technology. So right now for this particular repair, what will happen, of course, is the customer will have to go back and I'm not sure how they're going to figure this out because I don't quite see how you're going to get around the uh, you can't use FedEx or UPS and put it down as a power supply of $50, right? So that's going to be you know, a bit of a challenge there. But just really wanted to just sort of put some blog around this and just get my own sort of comments out there because I know for many of the subscribers, you know, you're undertaking repair work yourselves. And I understand, you know, you also reach out both to myself and then to other uh, people out there, in, including the forum websites, where you're trying to find service information or service-related data. And this right to repair for all equipment is really, really important right now, right? As as a consumer, you know, as a as a as an end user, you know, you really have that right. You know, you have that right that if you purchase a piece of equipment, you should be able to take it to independent repairers or even repair or undertake the work yourself. So. Uh, it's really just a shout out uh, on the on the industry as a whole. All right, thanks for your time, everyone. Cheers. Bye bye.